Hi, traders. Dr. Barry Burns here with TopDogTrading.com. And I just uh, created a new blog, FibonacciRetracement.net, where I'm showing a lot of different Fibonacci techniques because there's been so much interest in it. And so I decided to create this video as a free video to share with everybody and give a little basic Fibonacci information. And again, this is going to be focusing on Fibonacci retracements. So, for example, here is the ES, the E-mini five-minute chart. This is actually, you'll notice, uh, post-market data. And uh, so this kind of thing works both with uh, pre-market data, post-market data, during trading hours, and so forth. But basically, here's what we do. We're drawing Fibonacci levels. We'll take it all the way down here. And on a retracement, you're starting at a high or a low. In this case, we're looking at a downtrend. So we're starting at a high, and we're going to a low. And then what we're doing is we're looking at the percentage of retracement back toward the point we started from. So zero is the farthest point because there's no retracement from the end of the trend. 100% is back to the original part, because that's a 100% retracement back to the beginning of the trend. And these are the numbers that we use, 23.6, 38.2, 50, 61.8, and 76.4. So as you can see, now you have to start here, so you can't really point out this. And it comes back up here, plays with 23.6 a little bit. And then the next day it opens and gaps way open. Okay, so now we have to do something new. So what we'll do is we'll just take this off, and now we'll draw them the other way. I like to show everything going both up and down, long and short, uptrends, downtrends. I think it really helps people. So here we go. So now you can actually, this is one of the questions that comes up with Fibonacci, is can you use Fibonacci numbers with gaps? And the answer is yes, you certainly can, because it is part of the market. That gap is part of the market movement, even though it didn't plot any bars there. So we go from that low to that high, and again, the market retraces back down to the 23.6 level. Now the other question that I get very frequently is, um, okay, so now the market's gone above the zero line, so we're not coming back into the retracement zone here anymore. So now, how do I determine which highs and which lows to use for measuring these Fibonacci retracements? Because now I need to create uh, new Fibonacci levels. So where do I start and where do I end? What low and what high do I use? And there are several different questions uh, or several different answers to that question, but the most important answer to the question is that it doesn't matter as much as you may think. Because like a lot of things in trading, these Fibonacci levels are relative. And so you can use a lot of different highs and lows. There is no one high or one low that is the right one to use. It's all relative. All you're doing is you're measuring percentage retracements off of any particular high or low. So I do recommend that you use some significant ones and, uh, you know, something that just stands out to the naked eye. The reason for that is because there is uh, somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you have a, a lot of people looking at the same Fibonacci levels, they're more likely to hold. You have more people trading off of those levels. So you want to use levels that a lot of people are going to see that just, boom, pop out, and everyone will see with the naked eye. So that's one thing that you want to keep in mind. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that, for example, if you use really, really small swings... Okay, like this. Okay, that's a very small swing from that high to that low. Nothing wrong with it, but look, all these levels are so tight together. They're so close together that they really become somewhat meaningless. You could say, well, yeah, it does come down to the 61.8 level, but golly, even you know within one bar, there's two levels there. So how much meaning does that really have? I would argue probably not a whole heck of a lot. But other than those things, 
you can see now we could go to this high. So now on the visible chart, we've got the lowest point here, the highest point there. The farther these points are, the more these Fibonacci numbers spread out, the more the levels spread out. And so from here, um, again, we retrace back down to the 23, let's see, there it is, 23.6 level. And works very well. So again, we've marked it from, uh, where did we go? From there to there, and it went to 23.6. Then we went from there to there, went down to 23.6. So see, it's all relative. The range point-wise is changing and the market just tends to move in these percentages. So let's do a little bit more with this. We'll move it on over here. And again, let's find the bigger swing. Okay, let's see if we can find an even bigger one. Get something more significant going on here. Oh, here's another thing that I should point out too is that I like to use it with candlestick patterns. So when you get candlestick patterns, I think it's easiest just to go ahead and draw them from the lowest low to the highest high. Now you can use the real bodies. And in fact, I have another video where I even make a, a real point of talking about some of the advantages of that, and, and that is true. But for beginners, when you're just starting out with Fibonacci, I recommend you just use the highs and the lows, and you use your Snap2 to tool. This is NinjaTrader. And so in NinjaTrader, what's it called here? Actually, we have to go to our drawing tools. And it's called, well, Snap2, yeah. Snap2, open, high, low, close. And that way, see if I move this, it doesn't stay with my cursor. That line moves to the highest high of the bar that's corresponding to the cursor. That way I don't have to be so accurate in my exact measurement. And again, just makes it real easy. Now with candlesticks, uh, support resistance levels are zones. So you could say, well, the low comes below the 23.6, the low comes below, but the real bodies are holding that 23.6 pretty well. And that's the main point. Do not consider these lines to be actual lines, even though they look like lines, and technically they are lines on your chart. Support resistance levels are always zones. You've got to give them a little bit of play. And well, that's actually where we are right now today. So that's a brief introduction to Fibonacci retracement. And when the market is real strong, it'll retrace just down to the 23.6, as we've seen here in several examples. 38.2 is the next level. 50% is actually not a Fibonacci level, but almost everybody puts it on their charts, and it is very, very significant. The most important um, Fibonacci number actually is the 61.8. That is the golden mean, and so of all the Fibonacci numbers, that's the most important. 76.4 is pretty much the mirror of the 23.6, and then all the way back down to 100. You will also see the 100 and the 0 line become very important, too. And even after the market breaks beyond the 0 and 100 lines into the future, these levels, as the market comes back into the zone of 0 to 100, those levels can, t can continue to provide support and resistance into the future. So that's the introduction to Fibonacci retracement. Again, if you want more articles and videos and so forth, uh, feel free to go to my new blog, which is www.fibonacciretracement.net, and there's more free information there.